second reading from the gospel. This time from the book of John, written by the disciple John. We're going to read from chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Hear the word of the Lord. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, this is the one I was talking about when I said, Someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. From his abundance we have all received one gracious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one, who is himself God, is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this particular passage from John, I kind of want to start with, but I may go back and forth between this passage and the wise men passage, because I really want you to think. I really want you to think and see how the word of God can come together. Now, often I will also read from the Old Testament, but if I'd done that this morning in the passage I wanted to read, it would have been just really, really long, <laughs> because they are all prophetic passages, uh, prophetic meaning, telling of the future, uh, telling of what's going to come, and there are so many. I want us to focus on this, though that the light of the world was coming into the world. And that light is what we celebrated this past Christmas. But it's something we need to have all the time in our lives. And I'm not just talking about some arbitrary idea of shining. I'm literally talking about the Spirit of Christ. Now, we will talk more about that later when we talk about Pentecost, it's the birthday of Christ, the birthday of Christ's church, I mean. We will talk more about that in the future, but I just want you to think a little bit. When light comes into your life, what does it do? I don't have anyone to talk back to me, but Irene and Lynn this it morning. It the darkness. It what? It's the it gets darkness. rid of the darkness. It gets rid of the darkness? It pierces the darkness. It pierces pierces the darkness, and we, we hear a lot about that in, in Old Testament scripture readings and these scripture readings. But see, if, if you walk outside, it, it's not just in the book. You can see it. Have you ever been in a dark room that was so, so dark that you couldn't see your hand in front of your face? Have you ever been outside when the cloud cover is so thick, or if you've ever been camping like my family used to do in the past, that the sky would be so thickly cloud covered that you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. Or if you're not like me, I have a little bit of night blindness, they say it comes along with my eye condition. Uh, some of you can't see me, but I wear contact lenses. Uh, I wore glasses from the time I was four years old. 
and then got contacts so that I could see. And I remember the first time, the very first time that I was given a pair of glasses and we were at the doctor's office and he put my glasses on and my mom then couldn't find me. She was paying the bill. She couldn't find me. I had gone outside and I was so intrigued with how bright everything was and the details that I could see that I didn't know I couldn't see before. So I was looking at leaves on the trees, on the bushes, and I saw the veins in the leaves. I, I saw the detail all around me and my mother was like, okay, Kathy, it's time to get in the car. All I wanted to do was walk around and see. You see, your eye, eye doctors will tell you this, and, and my dear friend Sean, who happens to also have been my eye doctor for the last 20 years, you know, he, he talks to me about how light is reflective on the lens. And how do you see color? How do you see color? It has to do with light and reflection in that kind of way. When I think of Shirley and I think of her uh, cataract surgery that she had to have, you know, getting back to the brightness of that, uh, it took some adjusting to get back to, to see that which you didn't realize had become dim. Because that's what a cataract does. It kind of covers your eyes a little bit like the clouds do, you know, in the sky sometimes. Have you ever been outside when the clouds are all gone and just looked up to see the stars? On December 21st this past year, did you go outside and see that phenomenon happening, what some people are calling the, the uh, Bethlehem star, or the Christmas star, when the certain planets were aligning a certain way? Some believe that is what happened at the birth of Jesus. Most people don't really know for sure. We just know that there was a star. We know that when the clouds are gone, when whatever it is is fogging us up, when that's gone, we can see more clearly. That's what the light of Christ does in our life. It's like coming into that dark room where you can't even see your hand in front of your face and someone lights a candle. See, you can prove that this whole phenomenon of light and what it does is true. So we can talk about Jesus being the light of the world, and it's extremely important to talk about that, but take it and break it down a little bit to the idea of light. See, if you light one candle in a dark room, you can suddenly see. The light is stronger than the darkness. It literally pierces the darkness. I used to take my youth groups into a dark room. I know that sounds really strange. But I would take them into a dark room, and we would turn all the lights off in the church, and I would have someone outside of the dark room, and we have the doors closed, and we blacked everything out, to turn on a light. And they would all then look at the door, and they could see the light seeping from under the door. You see, if you were outside of that room, you wouldn't see darkness seeping in. You, you, darkness doesn't do that. Light is more powerful than darkness. If you don't believe me, go get in your closet at home and try it. <laughs> light pierces darkness. And the more light there is, the more the darkness cannot put it out. So sin is kind of like darkness. It's kind of like clouds. What is sin? Sin simply are things that don't please God. And things that don't please God are things that hurt us and hurt others. Things that are just not good. It isn't just a bad word. It's just things that separate us from our creator, from the living God. So things that separate us are like these clouds. They're just like them. And this morning, I was getting ready to come and was running a little late for family reasons. I get in my car, which I had not parked in the garage. Have you all ever been guilty of this? And you get, you get in your car and your car is fogged up or you have ice on the windshield and you have to wait to warm it up. I'm thinking, okay, this goes right along with what I was gonna talk about. I couldn't see. I couldn't see light in front of me, and even if I tried, 
It just wasn't clear, you know? I needed clarity. So I had to wait a little bit and turn the defrost on, get the temperature just right in the car, and then make my way on here. You know, sometimes they talk about God having rose-colored glasses. Like, that's this idea of looking on us with rose-colored glasses, not really seeing the, the bad stuff. Well, I think it's more than that. I think that it's Jesus. I know that it's Jesus. So Jesus is here to penetrate the darkness. But it's, it's more than that. It's here to penetrate our sin. To break through all of that stuff. So that God can look upon us again. So there's this reconciliation, this fixing of the situation that happens. And we need that as humanity. We need hope. We need hope. We need God to pierce the darkness around us. We need it more than ever right now. I've told you many times before, and I can't help but repeat it, a moment in my life that was so, so important where I was struggling with, do I still need to be in the ministry? Am I really called to be in the ministry? What am I supposed to be doing? Maybe you've had those times in your life. Am I really called to be a teacher? Am I really called to be a doctor? Am I really called to, to work on this crew? Am I really... And you just... You just need a moment of clarity and you need God to shed light on the situation. To shed light on the situation is to bring clarity, but it's just to help you see what you couldn't see before. So I was in one of those states, you know. What am I doing with my life? And our bishop from the Methodist church here said to me, Kathy, just step where the light is right now. Just step where the light is. And as I think about this whole concept of light, and I think, you know, it's evident all around us. Sometimes you just need to step where the light is or where you at least know where there's light and go there because you need clarity. You, we, all of us, the world, our church, uh, the church universal, Christians everywhere, people that don't believe in God, that don't even know he exists, we all need him, and we need the clarity of the light of Christ to shine into the world and to bring hope to us that it's all, not all doom and gloom, but there's hope in the future. There's hope in the midst of all of this. Hope in the midst of all of this. So let me back up for a minute to the wise men. So what was this star in the east, and who were these wise men or wise kings, we three kings, well, most scholars believe that they were astrologers, so they watched the sky. Now, they saw a phenomenon, uh, let's call it a phenomenon, the, the Bethlehem star, the Christmas star, if you will. Uh, many of us know that this star, if we were to actually read deep into the scriptures, we would find out that it wasn't just present for three or four days, like the phenomenon that we saw December 21st of 2020, which you could go back out and see this uh, astronomical phenomenon for about four days, approximately. See, Jesus, according to the scriptures, may have been anywhere from a year to almost two years old before the wise men ever appeared. But we also know, if you read back to the shepherds, that the star was there. And then it says that the wise men got there and the star settled right over the place of the birth. I just find that fascinating. I find that fascinating. My daughter Holly had to do a project, and I'm remembering her today because today's her 26th birthday, but she had to do a project and she wanted to try to prove the star of Bethlehem. So she did all of this research and then had to do a presentation about the star of Bethlehem. And I'm not nearly as smart as she is in certain ways, but there were people after that in her class that were like, oh, maybe that really happened. <laughs> because there's some history and uh, some documentations of history of phenomenal events uh, at certain periods of time 
that happened near what we would call the winter solstice or near what we would think of as approximately the time when Jesus was born, which was based on certain festivals and things and what the Bible tells us. That's why we, are, we have it near the winter solstice. Okay? But she had discovered that there were actually things that did happen that are documented. So to say that, oh, that never really happened or that's just a myth would be kind of nutso. We may not know which of those phenomenon exactly were the, were the star, but it appears that something happened. And it's documented and it's real. You know, even if it was the planets aligning like it was on December 21st, it's still a beautiful phenomenon, a miracle of God, the universe, the cosmos that we live in. I want to encourage you to go look at the stars tonight. Go outside and see the sunshine. Let yourself understand what light does and then understand what Jesus being the light of the world means coming into our lives. He sheds light upon the situation. We can see with more clarity when Jesus is in our lives. Have you ever been blind? Have you ever worn a blindfold? There are people in this world who are blind. I've met several that are. One lady in particular was with me on what we call a Emmaus Walk, Curcio. It's just a Christian uh, retreat about faith and learning who Christ is. She played piano. You know, you wouldn't know she's blind while you were listening to her. She had the biggest testimony. We all want a testimony, but hers was this. She would always talk about, whenever she was around me anyway, about how the light of the world penetrates the darkness, and that light of the world is Jesus Christ. But she was blind. And had been blind since birth. But because of Jesus, she understood what the light of the world meant. Not like you and I. Or maybe it was better than you and I. She couldn't wait for the day that she meets him face to face and she gets to see what real light is. Real light, I guess in earthly terms. But I'd never known anyone that understood the light of Christ better than her. That God can light up your heart God can light up your life. God can light up your soul in such a way that you can see more clearly the path he wants you to take or maybe more clearly the circumstance and the situation that you are in. On this New Year's, I want you to think about it. Where do you need the light of Christ to be shed in your life? Where do you need some light shed on the subject? Where do you need that? Where do you need that? I'm going to read to you, uh, this is very Methodist of us, but they use it in other denominations, those that follow Christ, but I think it would touch anyone's heart. This is John Wesley's covenant prayer. Give me just a moment and I will pull it up and I will read it to you. And I'm going to read it twice. Once for you to think about what I'm saying. And secondly, to pray it with me. If you were in service today, it would be printed and you could read it with me. But this was his New Year's covenant prayer and it kind of has become famous. And forgive the old English, but let it speak to you. Dear God, I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt, rank me with whom thou wilt, put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, 
let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? What does it have to do with light? It has everything to do with light. Because when we would surrender to Christ, I want to challenge you that if you will give your life over to him or, or renew your covenant every year, it's good to renew things, isn't it? It's good to remember things. It's good to remember who we are. It's good to, to give God a chance if you haven't before. Just give him a chance. I love this prayer of John Wesley because in a sense, the prayer is so full of love for Christ. Love for Jesus, the Christ. Love for God incarnate in Jesus. Love for the very Holy Spirit of God, needing the Spirit of God, which moves among us to help us live this life. It's, it's just full of love and this desire for God and this total surrender. So in this new year, think about light, Think about how Jesus sheds light on the situation. And let's pray this prayer as the people of God. Pray with me. I am no longer my own but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O oh glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth let it be ratified in heaven. Amen and amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. God came among us. Hear the words from John. First five verses one more time. In the beginning was the word already existed and the word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. 